It goes without saying that attracting, motivating, and retaining employees around the world can be a tremendous challenge. What are the current and future reward trends and strategies for geographically dispersed employees, particularly those in India? Well, here to talk about this topic is Samir Khanna. He's the head of training and rewards for India for a company called Logica, which is a business and technology company that employs 38,000 employees in 36 countries. I want to welcome Samir. Thank you. Samir, so t let's talk about what's happening in India with total rewards these days. Tell me about how the concept is being received or how it might be different than what other people would see around the world with Total Rewards. Okay, firstly, Ryan, Total Rewards as a concept is something that seems to have originated in US. It is a concept that is yet to catch on very heavily in the country. Uh, we do understand compensation, we understand benefits, we understand work life, and we understand the other components that goes into Total Rewards. But what is the need of the country, what is the need of the people, that's the critical part. Now, we have people who who are just uh, at t times, which is a couple of decades ago, were basically getting their meets uh, satisfied. Okay, so they were at a stage where they were just happy to get any kind of salary. And even today, if you look at the workforce composition, it is made up of people who come from different strata and different society. For them, it's it's difficult to paintbrush and say you know total rewards is kind of the key. For, because for some, compensation may be important, for some, benefits may be important, and work life to a very minuscule population, which, which is essentially in IT and ITES. However, having said that, we in India are also equally focused on what is called performance and rewards, or performance and recognition, and similarly on career development opportunities that are available. But to put it all in the context of total rewards, that's something which is not happening right now. It may be taking place from an EVP perspective, so people are looking at it and attuned to it, but not looking at it and saying, this is the reason why my employment exists with the organization and what the organization is giving to me. Do you see a lot of turnover uh, of employees for some of the simpler elements of rewards? For example, will they, will they leave a company just for base compensation, or do they, what are the attractors that are, or the retainers that keep them in a company? Absolutely, it means uh, most of the people, and, and this is a trend across the industries, People tend to leave or join because they want to know what is the take home. It's as simple as that. And when you talk of take home, it's not even what is the compensation that you're going to give me as a part of Logica's compensation sheet, but what is my take home after the government taxes and, and how much I'm going to get. And if that is X percent over what I'm getting at Microsoft or some of the other organizations, I'm happy to come with you. It's as simple as that. Uh, benefits is something that is hardly in the play because when a person is not able to look at beyond the monthly compensation at times, benefits is a far cry. Now, what I'm talking about is the bulk, the majority of the youngsters, because our median age is less than 25. So that's where a bulk of the majority lie. How important is the family in the, in the entire total rewards uh, picture as you see it? I mean, I think in the US, and, and I may be wrong about this, but it's largely determined by the breadwinner and or his or her partner and spouse. Tell me about the family role in, in India. Family role is very critical. Uh, even though we have evolved from joint families, large family, to a somewhat nuclear family culture, uh, but still family plays a very critical role. So uh, it's, it's not uncommon that the parents come and live with the young couple at the time of uh, birth of a baby and you know stay there for a year or so to support uh, the child at birth and thereafter. It is not uncommon to come and stay even otherwise. And, and, and that's something which is inherent. Uh, it's also not uncommon to kind of recommend which organization to work for. And hence, all of us also, uh, besides the employment opportunity, work on our branding. So as to ensure that our brand is known not only to the employees, but to the employees' parents as well. Because they play a role in terms of deciding or in terms of at least suggesting which is the right organization to join. Samir, so, I want to ask you to look a little bit ahead into India's future here I mean, and take a broader perspective outside of your company and, and tell me about the broader trends on the horizon, socioeconomic, cultural. What are the broader trends for India in, in the next 20 years, 50 years maybe? Uh, Ryan, uh, what India is going through today is people's expectations. People have needs of compensation and that's what's been met through the remuneration strategies that organizations use. Essentially because the needs are cash focused, they're being met with more focus on the cash. There's very less trend of 
focusing on benefits. And when I talk of benefits, I'm talking of long-term benefits, be it retirement benefits or healthcare benefits. Uh, over the last two days at World at Work Conference, I've seen uh, so much being talked about from a healthcare cost perspective. And there's so much for us to learn and improve before we get into the stage where, for instance, US is today. Uh, hence, we need to start looking at the long-term benefits for our employees today. We do have provident fund scheme where an employee, as, a, as well as the employer, contributes 10 to 12% of the base salary. But what typically happens is, as soon as the employee leaves the organization, he encashes the money. So there's nothing that is being put into the kitty for a long-term perspective. And that, to me, is a worrisome situation, probably not today, but definitely at a time when our median age rises and our people start staring and saying that, look, I haven't saved enough for my retirement. It was a bit different in, in 70s and 80s because we had a heavy advent of public sector undertakings. Public sector undertakings by its very nature had schemes which were uh, a lot of time defined benefit in nature. And because people tended to work longer with an organization, they would get the benefit at the end of 20 years, 30 years or at the time of retirement. But with uh, the work span reducing drastically, I, I see this really potentially becoming a problem for us. 50 years from now, where do you think India will be in terms of total rewards, Can, if you care to make a prediction? Uh, 50 years from now uh, is, is, of course, difficult to predict. It's a long time, maybe 20 years. Yeah, but, but, but I'll, I'll take a guess. You, you see, our average age, which is low at present, will, will slowly start rising. And uh, if you look at the trends, the rise will be steeper than what is currently taking place in some of the Western world, uh, which clearly means that we will be staring at the reality of uh, the long-term benefits faster and quicker at that time period. We have the advantage of the, of, uh, so as to say, demographic dividend today to make good of that for tomorrow. If we don't focus on that, then we will miss out on a great opportunity from a total rewards perspective. The other key element is as people grow and uh, you know, from a needs hierarchy perspective, they, they are happy with the basic, but they can now spend more money on other needs. So they start looking at benefits. And if we continue this trend further, then people can start saying that, okay, now I've got enough money that I've saved. I've been able to invest in my long-term benefits. Now I can relax and not work uh, you know, crazy long hours and probably look at work-life balance, which historically is a key important element for us because we value our family very deeply and strongly. Everyone does, but uh, there are strong family ties. So, so that's the next stage. And if we take that further, then to say, okay, now that I'm satisfied, I'm able to get what I want, am I really doing the kind of work that I really want to be doing? You know, it's probably the first question one should ask, but because you want to earn money, you don't ask that question first. And I see organizations also playing an important and key role in this because our role is to educate employees to get them to understand what is best for them. A lot of times employees do not know. means when I was a youngster and probably Ryan, when you were a younger person, you had so many options but probably didn't know because we didn't have the knowledge of internet. Today that is available. And through that we have got a powerful medium to tell people what they can land up doing which is right for them. I think we will not only be doing service from a AMR, which is attract, motivate, retain talent perspective, but a long term horizon of really getting the best out of people. And if we really and truly do that, we'll be playing to their maximum potential. I want to thank Samir Khanna, who's the Global HR Operations Manager and Head of Compensation in India for Logica. And for World at Work, I'm Ryan Johnson.